Hi guys, so is uh, this town really the ugliest town in the Algarve? Well, I don't know, but it's right up there with the contenders. And I think that there are a couple of other towns which, you know, I'd love you to, if you know the Algarve, just drop in the comments and say, okay, this is the ugliest town in the Algarve. <laughs> We're talking today about Amazon de Pera. Now Amazon de Pera is an interesting town because I spent a lot of time there um, when I had my stand-up paddle business back in 2018. Actually I sold it in 2018, so 2015, 2016, 2017. And um, it was amazing. We would start from Amasau de Pera and paddle west towards the most beautiful caves in the whole Algarve. And I think that is probably the most beautiful stretch of the Algarve from Portimao around to Amasau de Pera. It's like 10 miles or 15 kilometers of fantastic hidden coves and caves and oh, it's just gorgeous. Sand, beautiful. And so that part of the Algarve is absolutely gorgeous. And Amasau de Pera is right there. So it does have the bonus of being right there. But if you look at Amasau de Pera, it's been like somebody in the 70s came and just dropped a whole bunch of terrible looking apartments, big blocks of concrete and stuff, and sky high. I mean, like some of these things are 15 stories high. Um, and it started off with the Hotel Garb back in, the, in 1959, it was actually designed. But first of all, let's talk about the location and access. Now, where is Amasal de Pere? So if you start at Faro Airport and head west for 35 minutes on a good day when there's no traffic, 50 kilometers later, you'll arrive in Amasau de Pera. It's interesting to see how the train line fits into Amasau de Pera, because it's actually about 15 minutes drive from Alcantarilla Gar, which is actually the train station up near Algorge in the north. So it's quite a long way from the train station. The highway is much better served, um, and it just vips down to Amasau de Pera. And you can actually get north up to Lisbon through, um, you know, just north of Albufeira. That's where actually the, the main road goes. But as we zoom right now into Amasau de Pera, let me just show you some of the regions. So, so we have Villa Lara and Alporxinhos just to the west of Amasau de Pera. And then Praia do Val do Olival in the center, Praia da Amasau de Pera, the main beach. And then off to the east, Praia dos Sugados. Just note that Amasau de Pera only has 6,000 actual residents that live there all year round. And during the summer, it explodes into like 100,000 people. So as you can see, these images were taken in July last year in 2022. So it's, um, it's still pretty busy but it is hugely seasonal. Now the main historical building in Amasau de Pera is the Fortaleza, where were the fortifications, which are actually built in the 16th century. Some writers say it was built in 1571, but it hasn't really been proven yet. And the reason it was built was to protect the town and its inhabitants from the the pirates. I know it sounds pretty scary and like, you know, fictional, but there were a lot of pirates here from North Africa and they were called the Burberry pirates. They were Berbers from the Barbary coast. Okay. So they were Muslims and they just rained hellfire on the place. So this, obviously this fort will protect people. And there's a little chapel in the fort, which is named after Sant Antonio, who is an interesting guy because he was born in Portugal and became a saint. And then he went, went to Rome, eventually ended up being called Anthony of Padua, which is in Italy. And he spent a lot of time helping people around the world. And he actually got sainted. It was one of the fastest sainthoods to happen because normally you have to wait a certain amount of time after you're dead before you become a saint. And Anthony was super fast. He was very well known. There is another Catholic church close by, which is bigger and called Our Lady of the Navigators. Amasau de Pera used to be called Pera de Baixu, which means Lower Pera, and is related to the town of Pera a little further to the northeast. 
It's unclear when, but Lower Pera became known as Amasada Pera due to all the fishing gear and machines that were stored on the beach to assist the fishing community. Amasara is directly translated to a hard main structure around which something is built or made, or the hard cover around a machine. It's interesting to note the etymology of ferragudo, which had a similar meaning but different word. Ferro and aguda, roughly meaning iron and sharp thing. That thing used to hold the fishing boats up and down the sand. It's funny that a few kilometers away, they adopted a different word for similar things. So this area over here comprises three really awesome beach bars and restaurants, Art Nautica, Nana on the beach, and Praia Dorada. Heading westwards, you find a bunch of restaurants all situated on the Rua de Praia, which is, uh, it's beautiful, it's calzada, it's like a little waterfront. And then stop right in the middle of Amasada de Pera. The grocery stores are located, like Lidl, Intermarché, Continent, and Pingados. As we rotate a little bit further west, you come across the impressive Hotel Garb. Like I said, it was introduced in 1959 and it's been a landmark of Amasada de Pera since. We often go there and it's fantastic. It's now called the Holiday Inn and it's right on the sand. It's incredible. It's like a classic location, really is. Go check it out. It's not too expensive either. It's fantastic. And just to the little bit to the left of the Hotel Garb are Sardinia Asada, which is basically set right in the sand and you get some great grilled sardines there. And just a bit above it, Olive Almar restaurant, which is getting quite chic. Above restaurant Olive Almar is the Hotel Villa Gale Nautico, which is a four-star hotel. And the rest are basically apartment blocks. Apart from some beautiful hotels just to the west here in Alpochinus and Villa Lara, which is the, um, the Villa Vita Hotel and the Sofitel. Wow, it's not called the Sofitel anymore. It's the Villa Lara Talassa Resort. So let's head back into Amasal de Pera and check out some medical facilities because these are also useful locations. So there are three pharmacies uh, or chemists in Amasal de Pera, so you'll be able to get all your drugs and stuff. Also, there are a couple of clinics and the Centre of Saud, which is the government health centre. So that's important to know. You can obviously go to hospitals a little bit further out into Portimao, Faro, Lule, nice big international private hospitals. There's government schooling in Amasada Pera, no international schools, but there are some around about near Porsches, which is a little bit further out. So there's a primary school and there's a large primary and secondary school. Let's walk around Amasada Pera a little bit and just see if it is as ugly as it appears. So you see, Amasada de Pera isn't as ugly as it looks. I mean, you think if you drive past and you see the skyline, you think, oh, wow, that's horrible. But when you go in and you look around, and you have food and restaurants and stuff, it's actually getting a little bit better and it's cleaning up a bit. It's not so bad at all. And there are some great little parts of Amasada de Pera. Now, let's explore a little bit of real estate. <laughs> All right. 
Right, so let's get into real estate. Now, naturally, real estate is highly specific to the actual house that you're buying. And some houses may be older, some may be newer, some may be on the ground floor, some may be a penthouse, some may be right near the beach, and others have just got a sea view. Sometimes that sea view is a little bit small as well. So, you know, everything's very different. Some may be like a really, really brand new spot. So we have to go through with some rough averages here in this video, and it's a great starting point. But one really exciting point that I'd like to make is that over the time um, that I've been a YouTuber since November 2020, and it's been an amazing ride, so many people have got in touch with me and asked me how to, you know, where to go, how do I buy a house, and, and can I point them in the right direction? And I've built up a series of, um, or, or a group of real estate agents that I've worked with, but I really wanted to put it in-house so I could figure it out, um, and we could actually provide better service levels for you. So there's a guy called Nick, no, I'm called Nick. That's a little bit confusing, right? So Nick and Nick. So yeah, I live in uh, Quinta Salinas, which is, I suppose, geographically sandwiched right between Vardalobo and Quinta del Lago. So Nick, I've been mates with for six years and we've you know, done some work together in the past and he's a really experienced member of the Royal Chartered Institute of Surveyors and he's like done a lot of commercial real estate in London, stuff, been living here in, the, in Portugal for some time and he knows this industry well. So he is now on board with us and it's really exciting to be able to offer the service to you. So if you need any real estate services, you know, bespoke real estate, real estate services, just get in touch through algovaddicts.com forward slash contact. So back to averages, a two bedroom, 100 square meter house, about, that's about a thousand square foot, right? Um, an apartment, an apartment around Amasar de Pera will set you back anywhere between 230,000 to 260,000 euros. Now, 83 of those have been sold in Amasada Pera in the last six months at an average price of just over 2,500 euros per square meter. And crazily enough, an average of 11 listings per property. So that kind of means that there have been 11 agents selling each property, which is nuts. Anyway, we have some super funky in-house software, which cuts right to the core of the real estate market. But I'll leave that to Nick, the other Nick. So you can see how confusing this could get um, to demystify the Portuguese property process for you. But now let's look at a three bedroomed house, like a villa as we call it. So 200 square meter, 300 bedroom house, which is about 2000 square foot with a garden and a pool. Now 14 of those were sold here in Amasada Pera in the last six months. And they were sold at anywhere between 360K or 560K. So the average price per square meter worked out to be 2,765 euros per square meter. So if you're finding homes over and above that, they're considered expensive, but they may have better benefits. You know what I mean? They might have a bigger pool, a bigger area or whatever. So as I said, averages aren't the best to work with, but it will give you a rough starting point. So buying to rent your house as a holiday unit uh, makes you great cash, but right now, it's an interesting subject because Portugal is currently arguing new laws up in the parliament. They're bouncing around between uh, house to house. And it's going to be an interesting, an interesting point to see how that pans out. Um, so yeah, it's interesting times here in Portugal. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, overview of Amasar de Pera. And please let me know if you want any other videos. I'd love to hear it. Just, just if you want to know, if you have any questions as well, just pop them in the comments or get onto algovaddicts.com forward slash contact and we'll help you out. Cool. Thanks a lot. See you later. Olgarvaddicts.com